Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. So, can we make a head tracker out of a cheap and nasty webcam? So I bought this webcam off of Amazon. It cost me seven pounds and 87 pence. So 787, which I took as a sign. So I bought it immediately. So this webcam is 720p in resolution. So not very good in terms of its res and it's 30 FPS. This is kind of an experiment. I wanted to see if we go bottom of the barrel in terms of the webcam that we use. Can we still get good results? Um, so we need two bits of software, three bits of software, I might add. I'll put links in the description. Um, obviously, download at your own risk. It's off of GitHub. Um, so, yeah, go with that if you want to. I'm fine with doing it, though. So I've downloaded, first of all, AI track. So you, we've kind of got a bit of a, uh, a pipeline here. So first of all, the camera goes into AI track. And what it does, it takes the image from the camera, it uses AI to kind of pick out your face, see where you're looking, see where your head is relative to where the camera is, and detect all the movement. It then passes that data on to OpenTrack, and then OpenTrack in turn passes all of that information, the head tracking information, to the SIM. So it's kind of like step one is AI track, step two is OpenTrack, then step three is finally in the SIM. In terms of configuration, we'll start with AI track. Click on configuration and select your camera. I've got camera zero as the webcam that we're going to be using, the one I've got propped up on my monitor. I've got other cameras just because of my content creation. I've got other cameras plugged into my computer. Um, but everything else I've more or less left as uh, normal. I set the distance to one meter because that is basically where I'm at from my camera. One meter away from it, which is slightly higher, I think, than the default value. Then you can do a calibration thing where it detects your face. Um, but other than that, everything's as is. Okay, so moving on to open track what we need to do is set the input to udp over network so what that means is ai track is going to talk to open track over the network but obviously both applications are running on the same machine so they'll be talking over the network but locally if that makes sense um, output we set to free track 2.0 enhanced and that's the default and filter i've left as the default as well into the options go into output make sure you invert the pitch and invert the z axis you can also adjust what is the center position as well. So if you get into the plane and you find that you're too far forward, too far back, too far to the left, based on where you would normally expect to kind of the normal seating position to be, you can adjust the X and Y um, and even the Z, which is the depth, if you feel like you're too close to like where all the instruments are on the cockpit. Okay, so now we're in the sim. We are on the ground at Heathrow in the PMDG 737. Um, what we need to do, first of all, is in AI track, is click on Start Tracking. So click it give it a second it can be a bit laggy while the sim is running so of course it's asking quite a lot of your system to run this and the sim now it says stop tracking we know that that is working so what this is doing essentially is chucking data across from ai track chucking it over to open track then if we click start in open track that then passes all of it over to the sim now you'll notice as i move around here i'm not moving very much you can see we're able to look around the cockpit. Now, what we need to do is really consider why... Let me just get rid of this one. Move this down over here. Why are we doing this? Or why am I doing this? And this is going to be a different answer depending on um, what it is you're trying to do. So, for me, I wanted some head tracking so that when I'm on the ground at an airport and it's time to turn... I can look and get a better sense of where things are because I find it's a little bit hard especially like coming in and out of gates it can be a little bit weird go into the mapping and you can see what I mean um, there you go that's pretty good so I've got my yaw which is when I turn my head to the left and to the right that's how sensitive that is so I think just about there is pretty good just so I can see out of the window either side and I'm really not moving my head that much I may be only going to like 40 degrees kind of turning my head barely that the pitch is looking up and down so if you sort of look down and look up that is the pitch I was a little bit not sure on this one um, only because I found if I move my head up a little bit, all of a sudden I was looking up at the ceiling. And actually, I don't really want um, the pitch because, again, 
in my use case it's going to be mostly for looking left to right when I'm sort of taxiing on the ground it doesn't matter looking up looking down so much the roll is if you tilt your head side to side so if I do it a little bit you can see it moves it a little bit obviously it could move it an awful lot more if I drag this all the way up here now you can but again especially as I turn my head to look out the window quite often I find I twist my head weirdly um, I'm not sure why I do that if I sort of look to the left I also twist my head without thinking about it which is actually quite annoying so if I reduce the impact of that the roll gives it a nice natural feel just a little bit but not too much so X is if I go to move my head to the left or the right um, not sort of pivoting my head literally just um, moving it to the left or to the right while looking straight ahead but again I for my use case I have no need for that and actually I find it can be a bit distracting um, if I'm moving around a little bit in my chair similarly for the Y that's if I sort of sit up and then sit back down again sort of move my head up and down Z was a funny one Z is how far away I am from the webcam so right so if I sort of move my head forward or backwards um, initially I thought oh this would be really useful because I can lean back and then look at the top panel but actually it's a bit of a nightmare to A, keep your head still while you're trying to click things and also any slight movement of your head can go really weird like if you wanted to look at the right at the top it's really really difficult to show you I mean you could make it more sensitive but then you end up behind the seat as you just saw so a bit of a weird one that where did I have it? I had it about there didn't I? So that's how I've got mine set up. So if I uh, minimize this, now we've got the sim full screen. We just go for a little taxi around. I'll show you what it's like. We'll uh, go to a gate and see if we can get in there a bit easier than what we normally do. Also worth noting, you can map a button. So if I were to look around and get myself in a position I was unhappy with, I can click a button which I've mapped to one of them on my yoke, then it bring it recenters you. Similarly, if I've had enough of head tracking and I think I don't want it on anymore, click another button. And now I'm moving my head and we're back to normal. It's like head tracking is not on. Want it back on? You can re-enable it. It does do that weird little jump. So this is kind of what I was meaning. Um, just being able to look around a little bit, get a bit of a better sense of where you're going. Just on the ground at airports, I find that really, really helpful. Once we're in the air, once we're coming in on final approach, I don't find it very useful at all. And I think, given that I'm also doing quite a lot of content creation, like streaming, making videos, I think it actually could make for quite a jarring experience for the viewer. So this is only a 30 FPS webcam, 720p. Like If you were on a Teams call with this, you would probably be laughed out of the room. Um, it, it's honestly it's horrendous quality hence it was £7.87 <laughs> um, but for this application where you don't actually need to see the camera I think it's actually alright maybe a 60fps camera would obviously give us uh, double the amount of frames for the sim to get our head tracking data on there we go so just about here it's just nice to be able to turn your head to the left and just see where those lines are going And similarly here. That is so nice. That really does feel quite natural. And then you can just be looking around for where you can enter a gate. And it's so much easier. This is where I make a complete mess of it, but you get the point. There we go. And when you've had enough, just turn your head tracking off. You do get that weird thing where it sort of looks somewhere else and then looks back. But that, I would say, is £7.87. pence. Very well spent indeed. Let me know in the comments what you think. Do you think it's worth it? Um, how do you find it as a viewer watching this kind of content? Just then when I was moving around, do you th did it look bad? Did it look like you, something you didn't want to watch or you wouldn't want to watch? Maybe it makes you feel a bit queasy. I, I don't know. Let me know. I'd be curious to hear what you say. 
Might be um, interesting to do a follow-up video if I can get my hands on a 60 FPS webcam and see if the going from 30 FPS to a 60 FPS helps. Because obviously, you've then got double the amount of like head data to uh, to work into the sim. Maybe it'd make it a bit smoother. I don't know. Or maybe it's just the way it is. Regardless of 30 or 60, it's going to be kind of like this just because of the software we're using. Obviously, we're not using a fancy Toby Eye Tracker. This is very much a DIY solution, but for less than eight quid, hard to argue. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Please hit the like button because that really helps the video and the channel out so much. And if you haven't subbed, make sure you are because we do a lot of live content and uh, yeah, we can test out the head tracker in the streams and see what we all think. Thank you all so much for watching and as always, happy flying.